Welcome back to the show, everyone. Uh, I think our producer probably said it best that she will never think uh, the same way when someone tells her to go to hell. The hell she will now inhabit is one created by our next guest. Yes, his name is Chuck Polinick. I'm sure you've read his books. The newest one is indeed about, well, his version of hell. It is called <laughs> Damned. Wow, you're a weird guy, Chuck. Hi, Chuck. How are you? <laughs> and so I'm on the Damned Book Tour. Yeah. And I'm doing the Damned Book Events. Yes, you are. <laughs> and here's another Damned interview. Yes. How, uh, yes. how much fun is it to create a place like hell? I it's mean, a damned lot of fun. Did I say the book title enough? <laughs> the Damned, damned yes. Damned. The Damned Book title? And Chris Christmas is coming and books are fantastically easy to wrap. They are. Yeah. Um, now this I, would actually fit in most stockings as well, just to point it out there for people. Chuck, your well. version of hell, it's got demons of all sorts. It's got Satan. It, uh, it has a lot of damned people. And it's got bad things like fingernails and, um, well, boogers and things I can't mention. But what do you have against candy? Why does candy play such a big role in hell? Things you can't mention? <laughs> oh, sperm and poop. That's, that's like oh, if it's in there. there. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Canada. You can say just about anything on TV. <laughs> Sperm and poop. Yeah, but why they're candy in hell? in hell? All those candy. Candy is the currency of hell. That all the candy that you give away on Halloween yeah. is actually you're giving it away to people who visit for one night from hell. And that's how they earn their, their income. They take it all back to hell. That's what they buy and sell with and candy. Because of this and because of that whole thing, full size candy bars take on a special cachet because now at Halloween, of course. Everything's miniaturized. And popcorn balls count as nothing. <laughs> popcorn balls and licorice and uh, apples. <laughs> apples are the worst. Or the pennies that no one wants. Chuck, so where, where does the genesis of a book like this come from for you? Is it, is it a conversation? Is it just a thought? Is, it, is there a genesis or is it a bunch of things? You just killed the interview. You just killed oh, no, the interview. Oh, no, did I? <laughs> Damned. The, 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 the genesis is that my mother got cancer. My mother took a year to die of cancer and I took care of her that entire year. And my father is dead. And yeah. instead of writing a very sad book about a middle-aged man, I'm 50 years old, mourning his dead parents, I decided to write a funny book about a dead child who could still miss her parents, but they would still be alive so I could make a comedy out of it. And it was a lot more fun to write and it yeah. was a lot more fun to read. Well, but it and is, it's, uh, that's the genesis. It's an excellent coping mechanism as well, in exactly. a way, is to, to think yes. of this in, in, in a different way, because we have so many literal interpretations throughout human history of, of what this damnation actually means and what being damned actually entails. And you remember The Breakfast Club. Yes. Absolutely. The Breakfast Club to me has always just been a retelling of Sartre's No Exit, where you're locked <laughs> in a room with a bunch of people you don't like. True. Uh, yeah. Yes. And so she's and in hell with we should the jock, the mention, punk. The... Yeah, you said a dead teenager uh, and who she's with. Maybe you can explain a little bit more. She, di she died of a marijuana overdose. Is that even possible? That's a misdirection. It's <laughs> yes. a big misdirection because over the course of the book, we find out how she actually did die. And she has to come to terms with the fact that she was kind of murdered. <laughs> So it's kind of the lovely bones played for laughs. Well, and nobody in hell is really going to be honest about why they're there either, oh, because yeah. you get every kind right. of story yeah. that is possible of, it's like being in jail. No one's going to tell, oh, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. And like jail, you can work your way out of hell, slowly but surely, or at least you know, get some jobs that allow you to escape from hell, such as telemarketing. Telemarketing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so all the telemarketers that call you with a lot of annoying questions at dinner time are people telephoning from hell. <laughs> and, and that's how our protagonist ends up making her living in hell. She's working her time out. I, the other thing, I, I, I mean, when you, Fiona talked about the, the demons that inhabit uh, hell, and, <laughs> and I know from having talked to you before that uh, you really enjoy the process of research uh, for a lot of your books. And I'm guessing uh, with a lot of the demons in hell, these are actual uh, demons based in literature or in, in folklore or, or whatever it is. Did you research that a lot as you were writing? Mountains and mountains of books. You know, it was the least sensitive time of my entire life. I'm, ta I'm taking care of my mother yeah. who is ill and who is dying in her home. And I have piles and piles of books about hell and demons. <laughs> I'm sure that was an enormous comfort to her. Yes, yes. <laughs> but you managed to find a comical bent even to the demons. I mean, they're not scary yeah. in your hell. They're basically former celebrities, you know, in a way that, <laughs> that we, we hold people up, we hold deities up so high, and then once they're replaced, they are cast down so quickly. Yeah. 
Now, you mentioned folklore, and there is folklore surrounding yourself as well. Readings of your book where people have fainted. I think it was Guts. Is that the book that people faint from? It's a story called yeah. Guts. Yeah. Over 200 people. Two more people in Miami a couple weeks ago. Were do you, you there to witness this, or do you get reports from people? I caused it. You got, I caused it. But do you enjoy that, that yeah. your, your books ha do have that effect? I mean, whether it's the fight club, people not being able to handle the violence, or, or the weirdness of some of your, your stories, that they actually have that visceral reaction in people. I love that. I mean, how many <laughs> books get that reaction? Yeah. You know, most books are, put you to sleep. That's why we read books. But a story that would put you to sleep in your chair as you're listening <laughs> against your will, that's a good story. Uh, have you always been a storyteller? I, I know you started writing, uh, I mean, you know, sort of along the line, uh, I think it was at 33 or something, which is fairly late for someone to, to sort of approach writing as a career. But was storytelling always part of, of your makeup? Did you enjoy I have always been a, a liar. Yeah. Yeah, I've always been a liar. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to put that term on. <laughs> I'm now a professional liar. Yeah. So, I sold out. A professional um, embellisher. So now you get paid for your lies. Embellisher. Embellisher. So what's next for you after, after Damned? What are you going to write next? After Hell. Uh, what am, I, I, it's two more books because it's based on the divine comedy. So Hell is first, Purgatory I'm writing, Heaven is eventually the book that, that we'll get to. But that will be years and years. We, neither of us have finished it, and I don't want you to give away the ending, but I guess I'm going to ask you to. Uh, Madison, the central character in Damned, is she going to be featured in the yeah. three books? Yeah. So, and, and they're based on, again, the Divine Comedy by Dante. And in a way, I just see this as travel writing. That, <laughs> no, seriously. Most of us don't travel to hell. <laughs> Through the, <laughs> the desert of toenail clippings, the sea of sperm. Dante's Inferno is travel writing. Gulliver's Travels is travel writing. Charles Darwin's Voyage of the Beagle is travel writing. And basically it comes down to Anthony Bourdain. You go someplace weird, you eat something disgusting. It's travel writing. <laughs> True enough. Yes. For all those wondering, Darwin. Chuck, is hell. your heaven going to be a happy place? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Full of poop and sperm. Yay! And scene. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to lie, there are parts of this book that uh, uh, made me nearly faint and dry. or gag, and I love every minute of it. Make sure that you pick up Damned. It is available in bookstores right now. And it would be a damned good Christmas <laughs> gift as well, so think about that. Thank uh, you, We're going to take a break.